Here we are again. We are thrilled to be to be here with you all back on our channel, Physical Training and Godliness. We are thrilled at how the channel has been well received since we debuted one video. One video we have nearly 1000 views in that video. Subs are growing and growing. We're thrilled to talk fitness, lifting with you all. Today is a very special day. And today we are honoring, remembering the one-year anniversary of our dear friend and brother, bodybuilding great John Meadows. And I'm thrilled to be here again with my dear friend and the incredible Reverend Dr. Coppus. Father, how are you today? Doing well. Thanks, William. Uh, shall we begin with a uh, yeah. commemorative or memorial prayer for John's uh, peaceful uh, repose? Definitely, without a doubt. And uh, just so the audience knows, we'll we'll start out with a classical um, song that is used in the Slavic churches of Christendom, yeah. which is called Eternal Memory. And uh, they may be heartened to know that um, this song, um, at least in our official records, goes all the way back, at least in testimony, to the Second Council of Ephesus, which was in 449. Wow. Um, a little bit infamous, the council, but nonetheless, <laughs> um, it was uh, a gathering of the same Catholic bishops that would, uh, most of those Catholic bishops at Ephesus, uh, too, were also present at Chalcedon. So yep. many of the same voting fathers. Um, and it was there that uh, they would pray for the health and the well being of the emperor. And in subsequent times, this song we're going to sing in um, uh, John's memory. Uh, was used in uh, subsequent centuries and put in the liturgy to commemorate those who have been deceased. It's very much like the eternal rest that's used in the Latin church. And then at yeah. the end of the show, we'll uh, go ahead and, and in typical um, Roman Catholic fashion, uh, end with a, a classical prayer for the repose of John's soul. So why don't we go ahead and begin. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. O God of spirits and of all flesh, you trampled death and broke the power of the devil and granted life to your world. Now grant rest, O Lord, to the soul of your servant, John, in a place of light, joy, and peace where there is no pain, sorrow, nor mourning. As a good and loving God, forgive every sin committed by him in word, deed, or thought, since there is no one who lives and who does not sin. You alone are without sin. Your justice is eternal justice, and your word is truth. For you, O Christ our God, are the resurrection, the life, and the repose of your departed servant, John. And we give glory to you together with your eternal Father, and your all holy, good, and life creating spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. Amen. Or the servant of God, John, may God grant him eternal life to this departed servant by keeping him in his mind. Eternal memory. Eternal memory, grant, O Lord, to your servant John, blessed repose and eternal memory. Eternal memory, eternal memory, grant, O Lord, to your servant John, blessed repose and eternal memory. Eternal memory, eternal memory, grant, O Lord, to your servant John, blessed repose and eternal memory. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Very lovely hymn. That was a fantastic, incredible job there, Father. Beautiful, beautiful hymn. I did not know all that history. Yeah. <laughs> Incredible him. Wow. Really we read really the uh, Acts of the uh, Second Council of Ephesus, and we would find that exact final prayer there said for the emperor, and eventually it was extended um, to, um, uh, actually, it's the God grant him many years, which we all, but there is also the 
eternal memory for those who have died in the faith. So okay. we certainly uh, remember John, whom uh, we know uh, to be uh, on the other side of things now. And uh, we certainly entrust his soul to God, knowing that his goodness in this life certainly comes with any rewards possible in the life to come. Yeah. And so uh, we're very, very happy uh, to think well of him today. And uh, certainly uh, the exciting thing today uh, in, in memoriam is to explore uh, not only uh, John's um, contribution to faith and uh, to family, uh, but also to his contribution to the topic of our channel, which is, yep. uh, of course, weightlifting. So I don't know. Did you wanted to to bring up anything on, in commemoration of uh, what John has meant to you on this uh, particular subject, William? Yeah, I'd like to let the um, audience know that um, uh, indeed all of us think about uh, uh, John very often, uh, father included, myself, and um, a very near and dear friend of ours as well, uh, who. Uh, God Bully will be on the channel with us in the future, uh, named Tom. Uh, we, we think of him very often. And um, gone but not forgotten, uh, I would like to say that his incredible videos remain magnificent inspiration. Uh, the training program is that we're going to talk about today, and uh, one that many people may not know about are, are, are programs that we believe to be um, elite level, <laughs> very, very good very testing programs. And um, in John's own words, um, as he put forth and he said, he would um, never put out a program that he would not battle test himself, if you will, those were his words, and a program that he believed to be um, uh, very beneficial to those that really take heart and love in physical training. And of course, uh, John was a wonderful family man. Family man. So, um, in fact, as you know very well, uh, this training program and everything else in life, he, he would uh, ded dedicate and devote Sundays uh, to church and to family time. And I think that that is a very wholesome and a very wonderful thought there, Father. Um, any thoughts? Yeah, I was just thinking that uh, today we're going to be discussing per your possession of his materials, thanks to uh, John's widow, Mary Meadows, with whom he uh, was seen on his channel training many times. And... Um, uh, whose um, zeal for lifting uh, got Mary into the gym because she know, knew, as she uh, reported in videos, um, that uh, this was John's passion and it was a way for her to participate in his life. So we certainly remember uh, her today. And perhaps the best way, if uh, there are those watching, uh, can support uh, John's family and continue to care for John is uh, the links that you're going to provide to yep. Granite products um, because Mary Meadows, of course, is continuing John's legacy by um, providing for her family, John's family, uh, by selling high quality products, which are meant to uh, help you uh, become fitter more easily. Um, mm -hmm. And certainly I've continued to buy the granite products more initially because of how much success I had with um, the advice through you, William, from John. Uh, and as well as watching his videos, but now I uh, have just learned to appreciate um, anything from the taste to the quality of the products oh. that, that I continue to buy. Oh yeah, no doubt. I, I, I would definitely add that uh, they're incredible products and without a doubt, um, taste is really important and there's really nothing wrong in helping you on your journey to getting into better shape. And remaining there, you know, staying there in shape and um, really taking care of you, taking care of yourself. The one thing that I have learned to appreciate as I've gotten older, um, and God willing, that mentality remains with me, is that uh, we're not in this uh, to be part of that 1% that want to uh, blow up a, uh, a stadium in posing and win uh, one of those uh, little uh, Mr. Olympia trophies. We are in this for the long run, and I mean longevity, health-wise, to really to want to feel better. And really, training, being healthier, it will affect your mindset and pretty much everything else you do. Isn't that right, Father? Yeah, and in fact, what we're going to talk about today is uh, yeah. what you shared with me um, shortly after uh, John's passing. Uh, I think it was only four days after his passing, which was Creeping Death 2. 
Yep. Um, I don't know how available Creeping Death is out there. Do you have any sense of how uh, available it is to the public? Huh. I really don't. I really don't. Um, but I do know that uh, Creeping Death's tube, uh, per John's very own testimony to me, multiple times, it was a program that um, many were not able to complete. I will tell you that right now. He he, he said that, and it is a program that um, uh, people that we know have told me uh, firsthand that it is a brutal program in terms of the very fact that it is a challenging one, and it requires um, dedication and devotion. But I will add, and we'll talk about that later, it is a program that um, that may be different for other people because I know uh, some people may um, – Tweak it, if you will, as our friend Tom did, and maybe do five days. Some maybe do, may do six days. Uh, it may vary for people, but I think the one message, and I remember John said this on the air, the one message he wanted the people to know was not to burn out, not to flame out, to be able to do the program and benefit from it. And I think that that really is the goal of Creeping Death 2 and the never-before-seen one that we'll be talking about. Uh, right. Did, did you notice that the um, Roman numeral three is missing from the last part of the title down, Creeping Death? Are you going to put it up later? Is that like... Yeah, uh, my bad. Let me... Yeah. <laughs> I, will, uh, I will get the that I, out. I, I. <laughs> so, yeah, with the Creeping Death 2, then, uh, this is already a published program uh, by John, which we'll be talking about today. But I think it's important... Um, there we go. Uh, for the listeners to know that we're kind of using this as a springboard to talk about Creeping Death 3, which nobody has seen save a few confidence uh, of John. I know you, obviously Mary Meadows mm -hmm. has possession of it. And then um, I guess a colleague of his with whom he either lifted it or trained. Is that right? That is correct. Yep. Mm -hmm. And uh, with uh, Mary's permission and, and uh, blessing, uh, we hope to be able to unfold creeping death three at the end of uh what we have started on this uh his commemorative day his anniversary um is my own family uh, myself and my nephew dom and his uh you could say jim bro zach uh <laughs> have started creeping death two this is my first time at, at trying a hypertrophy program that in fullness i've always just kind of taken john's videos piecemeal and yeah. put them to go together over the last 13 months. Uh, what about you? Have you ever used one of these kinds of programs, William? Yeah, I have uh, utilized various different ones. Um, one particular program that I utilized and I kind of tweaked to my own liking was a, uh, a different one uh, a few years back, uh, very similar to the model of, of um, German volume training. So I have... Um, uh, attempted to put my body through uh, programs that are quite uh, quite challenging. So I'll be able to talk about um, recovery that mm -hmm. is definitely needed. And I'll be able to also talk about um, perhaps one thing, one bit of wisdom that I'll be able to share with the audience that I, I'm uh, uh, perhaps I could be badge of honor, if you will, are the numerous injuries that I have uh, gone through. And I can warn people that um, injuries are not good. They are setbacks, and uh, without a doubt, uh, if your body is signaling to you that your body does need rest, then your body does need rest. And I think that I uh, I came to that realization, and I, um, I've i given my body rest, and I uh, even told Father, I think it was this past week, I, um, usually, I usually go six days a week, but I felt like my body wanted one more day, and I gave it that day. And I can tell you, boy, do I feel refreshed this week. Great. Um, another thing for our listeners is if you're a subscriber, uh, well, what should be happening is William is going to be providing for you a link to Creeping Death 2, which means you're going to get access to it on mm -hmm. this day in commemoration of, of John's passing. But our hope is at the end of the 12 week program of Creeping Death 2 is we're going to get together uh, Tom, whom you've heard about, uh, William, myself, my nephew, um, Dominic and uh, his lifting uh, partner or his gym bro, if you will, uh, Zach. And we're all going to kind of uh, process our experiences. Myself as um, 
not a competitive weightlifter and probably just starting in the intermediate realm. My nephew as a competitive power lifter who's turned um, bodybuilder, uh, eventually uh, wanting to enter into natural bodybuilding uh, competition yeah. here within the next year. Um, I would consider him an advanced lifter as well as yeah. his lifting partner. Uh, certainly you are, uh, by all means, how many years is it now for lifting for you, William? About 18. 18. Wow. <laughs> So if you're not advanced by now, I don't think there's any hope for you. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, I think the exciting part is is that we're going to use our 12-week journey. Um, instead of having like Gregorian masses for uh, 40 days uh, after someone's death, we're kind of doing 12 weeks uh, of lifting in memoriam of uh, John Meadows, which should be fun because uh, it kind of – makes me feel like I'm uh, committed to try every exercise, especially the blasted ab exercises, which I hate. Um, oh, yeah. Make sure that I'm faithful to John's program to see what happens at the end of it. Um, yeah. So, no so maybe what we'll do too is um, I'm not much on uh, vanity pictures and things like that, but maybe uh, to cut some heads off and, and just kind of show some, some body transformations, not necessarily naming people. We'll see what happens. Um, yeah. I, don't, I don't really like getting into that stuff too much, but sometimes those kind of views, if uh, we're not making it personalized, so you can see a person's face and stuff like that, just body. No doubt. Those yeah. might be worthwhile putting on there as well. I am totally with you there. In fact, I think I've told you many times before that um, uh, I don't post pictures of myself on Facebook or, or anywhere, um, you know, uh, posing down or anything, if you will. But uh the very fact that we are trying a program out and we want to see how the program um does benefit us and give our thoughts in it i, I don't think it would uh it would be bad because we're not doing it uh for vainglorious purposes i think we're doing it to show okay what did the program do did it help us out and we're and in the very process of that at least for me i also do intend to talk about okay how do my joints feel? How does my strength feel? You know, all of those kinds of things. So I think it could be beneficial without a doubt. In, indeed, I talked with Tom about this earlier, and he said, I think um, it probably could be beneficial for this as well. Great. Yeah, this is – so this is uh, the start of our journey with uh, week yeah. – day one, week one. Um, I think that maybe the next thing, uh, before we maybe give some tidbits at the end of the show about Creeping Death 3, which none of, none of, nobody has really seen before, and yep. only really your eyes have been on it, William, so yep. we'll have to wait to hear from you, is maybe to go through some of our training principles just very, very briefly that we've already talked about, and maybe to consider it under just three S's, safety, success, and your split. Yep. Um, In fact, I'm pulling that yeah. up right now. There we go. So uh, the first one, uh, is something that I immediately learned from John upon watching his videos. William was trying to get me back into the fitness scene for, for some time, encouraging me, encouraging me. Um, he finally uh, managed to uh, get through all of my uh, uh, demurring and uh, deflecting. And uh, what did I find? I found an emphasis on safety. Um, and so one of the first things as I began to have uh, success as someone who couldn't spend even 15 minutes in the weight room. So my first uh, sessions um, were trying to get through 15 minutes. I was looking at the clock. Eventually, after uh, two weeks, you know, a half an hour, three weeks, 45, I was so excited when I actually could spend an hour in the weight room without trying to run out um, yeah. because I, I was just exhausted. Uh, this was no cardio either. This was just hypertrophy training. Uh, and eventually, you know, to get to that two-hour mark was, was, was something. But how did I get there? Well, if you look at John's videos, it's safety. Um, and one of the things, any time that I, I had a bad day in the weight room, it was probably because I was ego lifting. Mm -hmm. So I think that I talked with you, William, and with Tom, who is a registered nurse in the yeah. UK, about some of my issues. So when you do something like creeping death, I mean, the creeping death, I'm taking the creeping death to mean every week is going to get more and more difficult because you're going to have progressive overload, which means you're going to be testing your body as you go forward. If you need a deload, which we'll talk about, uh, then you take one. Uh, but uh, and meaning if you need a break from lifting heavy weight or you need a total rest day or several rest days extra, then take it. Um, but uh, one of the first things that uh, I had to deal with was inflammation of my shoulders. 
because I wasn't getting my omega threes, I think in uh, fish oil. Um, do you do anything omega three wise, uh, William? Yeah, I sure do. And I, I'm um, <clears throat> very adamant about my fish oil as well. But um, I remember like it was yesterday, the inflammation. I remember that. And I can tell you right now, um, really to get to the point of it, um, if you're if you're ego lifting uh, and you're ego lifting at any point, but even more so out right out the gate, uh, you're not going to last very long. Uh, the reason being, uh, you're going to get hurt. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've gotten hurt. Uh, one particular, and Tom, who, who will watch this back, is going to know I am talking about this truthfully. One particular thing that I, uh, that I did at Eagle Lifting, probably about four or five years back, I went crazy on the uh, bench press, and uh, I really, really pushed it to the point that I shouldn't have. And my elbows got so, in, so inflamed that the pain was so intense that I had to literally sleep with them on top of their own pillow. Wow. I mean, you don't, and I'm not bragging. My point is you don't want to ever get to that point. Thank the good Lord. I didn't have any structural damage, but the very fact that I got to that point, I shouldn't have gotten to that point. Ego lifting. And let me tell you one thing. I didn't gain 10 pounds of muscle overnight doing that. Ego lifting in my opinion, father, it really is something uh, that is very dangerous. Yeah. In fact, uh, my two stories over the last 13 months of return after many years would be one, um, trying to do uh, too much with curls, which is probably a common ego lift, um, and straining um, so much uh, with too much weight and not really looking at uh, look, looking at the optimal number of reps, but just trying to up the weight that uh, I had something like tendonitis for something like two months oh, and I had to decrease the volume to a ridiculous amount. So um, I don't think my curl weight is anything spectacular. And in fact, in um, Planet Fitness, you only go up to 60 pound easy bars. So I don't have to worry about giving numbers here. But, yeah. um, you know, I was probably ego lifting with a 60 pound easy, easy bar, which, uh, of course, uh, isn't that much in the bodybuilding world. Uh, but for me at the time, it was a return. And I ended up having to drop down to something like 50 and 40 pounds, which I was only getting for eight. Now, now that I've given up ego lifting, and I'm gradually using progressive overload every week, I'm using a 60 pound easy bar after that two months for sets of 30. I mean, that that's the difference, wow. right? Yeah. Uh, is I, I went for sets of eight too quickly to try to, to, to use the highest bar there because I wanted to feel good about having this huge bar. Yeah. And uh, I hurt myself. I was, I had to take myself down to 30 pounds. Uh, was doing it for maybe sets of six, maybe eight. And it was painful. When I finally got over the tendonitis, which I deserved for uh, putting my ego over uh, my health. Um, when I finally got over it by using progressive overload, that is just adding five pounds or a rep or a set every week and making sure I can recover within, uh, my goal is within three days, because that's my split uh, that makes sense to my body. Yeah. Um, after that, now I'm doing uh, a 60 pound easy bar, which again, isn't an incredible amount of weight for repetitions of 30, and I'm not having any tendonitis. So that just shows you the difference of being patient uh, and, and doing it the right way. And then the, la the, the last example would be, uh, I remember using the re leg press machine as my legs got stronger. I got pretty excited about that because I was always hated it and wanted to avoid leg days. You ever have that feeling, William? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so I, I started getting good at legs for the first time in my life. And it was uh, using the, um, the leg press machine. And I just threw on too much weight and tried to... Um, quickly do the range of full range of motion, which was the good part. Uh, but I ended up not quite popping something, but uh, I hurt something that required, you know, probably two weeks to heal because of, of, of ego lifting. And I could have just avoided it by doing good warm ups uh, and by uh, using a steady range of motion. Uh, again, I'm going to quote the Renaissance periodization for those things, which I, I can't remember John himself telling telling me about 60% of what I've done is probably John Meadows. Yeah, probably another 25% is uh, uh, from the Renaissance periodization books. 
And uh, if I quote them wrongly, feel free to correct me on the uh, channel because I'm going from memory here. I don't have them in front of me. But as far as my memory is concerned, um, you know, th those those uh, books were uh, very, very helpful in, in determining um, how to recover from these, these these sorts of things. But at any rate, um, uh, I'll be referring to those uh, from time to time. Any other uh, points you wanted to make on um, ego lifting and safety? Um, yeah, um, I remember dialoguing with John, and and I, I think I talked about it the first show we did. And uh, I remember talking to him about how I had uh, gotten hurt. Lower back inflammation is not good. <clears throat> it really can hinder you in everything you do in a day. And I was talking to him about ego lifting with um, bent over barbell rows, and I remember telling him that I was doing uh, German volume training. It was just an, um, not a good amount of weight. And I, he, he made one comment to me, and it was a comment that has uh, stuck with me since then, was that um, he said, well, you do realize, he said, um, because I made a comment. I said, I couldn't get the weight up. Uh, it was very difficult. And I ignorantly kept trying over and over, even though I was over the pain kept increasing. He told me, he said, you do realize that nobody was watching you. <laughs> you know, nobody cared. Um, yeah. Nobody cared. And it really does to me get to the point when you're there ego lifting at the gym, if you think you've got a whole audience of people trying to watch and see, oh, can you get that lift up? Likely you don't. <laughs> Very likely you don't. People are there. They're doing their own thing. Uh, they're, own, they're in their own little concentration, in their own little world. Ego lifting will get you nowhere. No, no, you, it will get you. It will get you injured. And um, really, it's not a good place to want to get to. And um, and really, you're, you're look, you're not going to build muscle by ego lifting because you're not going to get the full range of motion and you're going to risk injury more than anything else. Yeah, yeah. Your form will break down. Yep. Yeah, if you're a newbie, um, you can pretty much run around with a 45-pound plate uh, you know, chew on it, uh, throw it across a room, yep. and uh, provided that you have at least not the worst genetics in the world, uh, you're you're going to build some muscle. But yep. uh, when it comes to ego lifting, you're going to sacrifice form, and that means the primary uh, movers, the the primary muscles that are meant to move that weight, are not being uh, actually the central muscles moving the weight. You're probably calling in all kinds of helpers, all kinds of auxiliary muscles. Yeah. And uh, for those who aren't newbies, they're going to wonder why they're not uh, getting bigger biceps. Well, because you're not using your biceps, or at least yep. you're not principally using your biceps. So yeah, those are all uh, good reminders. The other, the other thing is, is that uh, William and I are both getting older here. And uh, my first six months, um, I went back to powerlifting, which I had done just a tiny, tiny bit of when I was in high school. And you know, I had some really good results, but I started to wear down. I'm, I'm in my 40s now. Uh, I think it's a good reminder that if, if you're in your 30s, you should start thinking about everything in the creeping death too, but just in general in the weight room should always be higher rep ranges, eight or higher. Uh, in fact, I'm perfectly happy now with reps of 20 and 30 uh, in my 40s. And um, yeah, you know what? It costs a lot more, but it's worth it when you, have, when you start loving the pump uh, and you start uh, having your, your skin really pop out. Uh, because it's filled with blood. Yep. Uh, that's one of the, the advantages of, of, ha of having these higher rep ranges is you can really get great pumps with that. So there, there is there is something to be said for that. But anyone who's listening to us that's starting to get in his 30s and doesn't feel like uh, his test is necessarily is exactly what it was in his 20s should start really, and the aging process, start upping the rep ranges because we're not here doing powerlifting. We're here talking about hypertrophy today, which is how to get bigger and more aesthetically pleasing muscles, yep. uh, which will of course be stronger in the sense that there will be uh development of uh the muscle such that uh, you're going to have thicker fibers you're going to have more motor units that are uh, going to be recruited if you're lifting correctly and yeah you're going to have the potential for being stronger uh, but we're not power lifting here we're, we're building muscles uh anything you'd like to say about rep ranges william that you're doing nowadays yeah definitely not doing the lower rep ranges that I used to really stick to. Um, I think the point that uh, really, in my opinion, it's got to be driven home um, is that uh, if you're a young lifter, fantastic. 
um, try to remain in the game as long as possible if you enjoy doing it. And what I mean by game, I mean uh, that world of fitness, of physical training and remaining healthy. As you get older, uh, you need to realize that if you're trying to max out every workout or every time you have a workout, um, you're very likely to get injured. Uh, the other point is, I don't want to belabor that point uh, too much. The other point being uh, that a healthy weight is also very important. Think of, uh, I've had people tell me many times that, well, you know, I know people uh, that are incredibly overweight, uh, but they've gone to the doctor and their heart's fine and what have you. Um, look, uh, I, I want to emphasize that being incredibly overweight is never healthy. The heart is having to work over time and, and do uh, work over an overload. It's never healthy. You want to be as healthy as you can be, and you want to get in shape so you can be able to live longer. And as the channel is about, uh, glorify God longer, worship longer, be with your family, friends, live life out as you should, comfortably, happy, and healthy. I think that's the main point. Great. I think the next topic that we wanted to talk about before talking about how to do creeping death uh, and its practicalities is um, pain, inflammation during any of the exercises, as John always reminded his listeners, there, I mean, there are two kinds of pain. There's good pain and bad pain. A good pain might be a burn, a feeling of burning that lactate in the muscle, which is uh, correlated with uh, hypertrophy, with, with muscle growth. Um, but what we're not talking uh, about is so-called good pain. What we're talking about is when you feel that tendons are hurting, when you feel that uh, a muscle is being pulled or a joint is being pulled in a way that is just painful, you stop. I mean, John was always insistent on that in his videos that you can find a different exercise that works the same muscle, or you may have to rest that muscle, or you can use something inventive like instead of using 80% of your uh, one rep max, so if I have 100 pounds as my max, instead of using 80 pounds, go down to 30%. You can do hypertrophy as low as 30% of your one rep max. If that doesn't cause pain on your muscles and on your joints um, or on your uh, your uh, tendons uh, that, uh, you know, uh, you're going to feel when you're um, putting too much strain on your muscles, uh, then, you know, like I said, I'm doing right now, uh, like today, with do, using Creeping Death on day one, uh, I, I, I can't do the uh, John's uh, uh, isolated rows with the... Um, using the uh, barbell be, that's, that's, that's anchored to the floor because we don't have that at PF, as you know. Um, instead, I, uh, I used uh, bent over dumbbells. But, you know, what were my, my rep ranges? 30. My rep ranges yeah. were uh, three sets of, of 30. Um, and you know what? I felt great. I had a great pump. My lats were fried. Um, my lats are going to get bigger. Yep. So, you know... Um, what am I probably not going to have by doing sets of 30? I'm not going to have pain. I'm not going to have inflammation. Uh, and I'm not going to have to stop mid-cycle and try to recover for an extra three days because I decided to do something that I can barely get six times, uh, which is, you know, five or six reps is your minimum hypertrophy training, uh, your minimum muscle growth, muscle size training. Uh, and, and if you're going to do that kind of strain, unless you're, you know, 18 to maybe 30, um, you're really risking quite a bit if you want to start training in that range. Yeah, um, you really are. If you want to begin training in that range, that is um, not definitely not recommended, uh, first off. Uh, the other point you made was a great one. Um, <clears throat> the fact that uh, depending which planet fitness you are at, in fact, I don't think any of them have that Um uh, that particular uh, machine, uh, you can very easily substitute it in for a different kind of movement, as you pointed out, dumbbells. Um, and that's very, it's very, very easy to do and not difficult to do. Um, I think that's a good point to, to make that uh, for people to not get discouraged and say, well, you know what, um, we don't have this, or we don't have that. If you've got dumbbells, if you've got free weights there, you can do it. Anything can be done at Planet Fitness if people think, uh, and any other gym, if people say, well, you know what, we're, we go to a tiny little mom and pop gym. Uh, do they have easy bars? Do they have barbells? Do they have 
free weights? Do they have a Smith machine, which likely will have at least one? Um, you can do it. <laughs> you can get the movements done. So uh, don't ever let the gym you're at, even if it was a tiny mom and pop gym, uh, don't ever let it deter you from your goal of getting a great workout in. Great. And I got our safety for doing creepy at two. Let's yeah. do, let's talk about success. Uh, if you want to build muscle, um, this, there's something that is uh, our natural rhythm of sleep. Um, our ultradian and, uh, well, I'll just do with the ultradian ry rhythms. Yeah. In other words, I think those are about 90 minute uh, cycles from, from what I recall. Uh, most of us, if we're not William, uh, we haven't had a medical sleep study that says that we're okay. We're going to need about seven and a half hours. If you're not willing to try to put in seven and a half hours and you haven't had a sleep study saying you don't need seven and a half hours, don't have very high expectations of your muscle building. I'm sorry. You're just yep. not going to, unless you have elite genetics, you're probably going to suffer quite a bit and not, not get near your goal. Now, my nephew was able to grow quite a bit, but once he started getting his sleep in, uh, it would be my testimony, having seen him send me pics all the time, that in one summer, he just blew up. His nutrition was not yet on. His uh, macros were not yet on. He had, let alone micros. I mean, he probably wouldn't even look at a vitamin and, and care. Uh, wow. So his his diet was off. Uh, his macros within his diet is off. His micros were, his nutri uh, vitamins were off. Um, but once he went from being a high schooler who didn't care about sleep, to getting seven to eight hours sleep, just giant blow up because he's got great genetics. Yeah. So if you're going to do creeping death too, get sleep. Anything yeah. else you'd like to say, William? Yeah, without a doubt, with a program this intense, <clears throat> you've got to get rest. I do want to confirm there. Um, uh, people have asked me many times and they've asked if I'm joking about the fact that I've, I've been checked out for the uh, it's it's not normal. The normal normal amount of people don't sleep uh, as little as I do. Yes, I have, and in fact, um, uh, my mother reminds me every time I talk to her how uh, she went through what she will joke around and say, uh, "I've definitely got time off of purgatory uh, from when you were a baby and having to um, uh, be there with you because uh, she had to get help uh, in the early early stages because of how little I slept as a baby." It really did not seem normal, uh, but uh, uh, normally you've got to get rest. It's very, it is very unusual when people can go on little rest. And um, I am reminded of this all the time by our mutual friend, Tom, who, by the way, is a registered nurse. I'll add one more thing. Uh, very unusual for registered nurses because he is in shape. He does take care and he loves bodybuilding. He loves reading up on it, loves studying it. In fact, uh, the way that I study and read up in theology, Tom is always reading about new studies, what supplements may work, which ones may not work. He just really loves talking about it. So when we have him on, it'll be a real treat. Great. Yeah. So now that we've we've talked about how you're going to make the most gains for grieving death too, we have to go to nutrition. Uh, and the first thing with nutrition is some of you uh, enjoy a beer, and that's great. Uh, the nice thing about the Renaissance periodization uh, is that it's capped your drinks. Um, you shouldn't be drinking more than four drinks a day and hope to make very much in the way of gains unless you have elite genetics. So if you're having four beers, you should probably stop there. Now, of course, that could probably decrease if you're a tiny guy um, uh, or a tiny lady. Uh, if you are a bigger guy, um, then you should still be at the max of four drinks. So I think you can do less than four drinks. You, you can't really um, say more. Uh, so the Renaissance periodization pretty much uh, looked at uh, all the data. They put it together for you in the Renaissance Diet 2.0, I think it's called. Um, you cap out at four drinks before you start to harm yourself when it comes to, to muscle building. Anything you'd like to say about drinking and training, William? Yeah, without a doubt. Um, don't go overboard. I uh, One thing that I will add is that if you are not uh, dumb, if you are not uh, Father Coppa's nephew, um, uh, uh, who has incredible genetics, and that's why I bring him up, uh, because he can get away with a whole lot. Of, at times, as I've heard, his nutrition has not been on point, but the guy um, could probably just rub up against a, 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 a plate and probably gain a pound of muscle, <laughs> rubbing up against a dumbbell or something. Um, if if, if for, for regular people, if you think that um, 
uh, that a night out of binge drinking and can be wiped away by the next day hitting the gym and trying to hit the gym hard, uh, very likely it will not do you well and it's definitely not recommended. Yeah, in fact, if you're going to pick, like if, if you're going to go out and have a good time appropriately, not lose your use of reason, Yep. but you're going to have five or six drinks and for you over the course of a night, that's, that's not uh, inappropriate. Um, don't, don't train that day. You're not going to get REM sleep. You're not going to sleep well. That means all that effort, all the energy that you uh, spent, all the muscle breakdown that occurred, no muscle building is going to take place or very little uh, because all the repair work and the myosynthesis or muscle buildup is going to happen during your post-workout sleep. So don't bother. Yep, no doubt. And then once again, uh, if you're going to do uh, Creeping Death, make sure your, new, your, your macros are on point. John yep. talked in his videos a lot about a 40-40-20 was, was how his usually worked out. It, it wasn't that he was obsessed with 40-40-20, but that that's just what most people in their regular training worked out, which would be 40% protein, 40% uh, carbs, and 20% fat. So if you're tracking your macros and you notice that you're in the 30-40% range for the first two and the 20 to 30% range for the next one, you're probably pretty close to being on point. And the Renaissance periodization, again, has come up with some mathematical formulae where they would tell you that whatever body recomposition you're shooting for, if you just get those macros, that 40, 40, 20, yeah. uh, right, that's 30% of your body recomp uh, can be constituted, if I remember my numbers correctly, 30% of your body recomp is just from getting your macros right. They, I think they would say 50% is just being in a calorie deficit. So you can get a, you can get half of the physique that you want by just being in a calorie deficit to lose weight, even if it's just a tiny bit of calories uh, every day that you're in deficit or a, a tiny bit every week and you're dropping about 1% of your body weight a week. I mean, William and I have been working on dropping weight together. We've uh, strategized. Uh, when I was at my uh, top, which was in the high 200s, I'm, I'm looking at two point some pounds uh, a week. When I'm in the mid 200s, it's about two and a half pounds a week. When I'm in the low 200s, it's, it's going towards two pounds a week at the most. So you shouldn't be losing more than a basically a percent of your body weight a week if you want to maintain that muscle. Anything on um, nutrition and, and weight loss for you, William? Yeah, those are really very, very good points there. I think that um, <clears throat> your nutrition has got to be on point. It has got to be on point. Uh, to get in enough protein. Uh, one, and, and I'm glad it came up. Uh, perhaps maybe in the future we'll do a whole show on it. Um, a number of questions have been sent to us asking, um, are there any snacks that you all have throughout the day that you that keep you all going? Um, I like almonds. So if there is something that you can have uh, that is, you know, relatively low in calories, almonds are fantastic for you. They sell those little 100 calorie pouches. Those are great. Really, really tasty as well. But well, that's the smart thing, William. You've got portion control because you're using yes. a package instead of trusting your instincts. There you go. I think that is important. And to, to hammer home that point, I, I remember um, uh, a dialogue with Tom just a few days ago, who, by the way, for the audience who may be wondering, uh, got inspired by Father Coppice and myself. Uh, we're talking about this dieting down. Um, and uh, Tom would joke around with me. He would say, well, what are y'all doing? Are y'all going, going on a bodybuilding stage uh, anytime soon? You're joking around. Well, he's on. Uh, he's dieting down right now as well, and he brought it up the other day. Uh, he said, "He said, look, if, you don't, if you're not careful with um, uh, portion control, man, you can really blow it. Um, and he talked about how uh, uh, oils themselves can really just blow you out of the water there. And there are many other things that we talked about as well. But be very careful with portion control and be very – you've got to be on point with your nutrition, maybe not obsessively on point. Maybe not to the point where, oh, man, you know what, uh, um, I'm under this amount of my goal or I'm over, you know, a little bit. And I've really totally blown it. But try to be as on point as possible. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, under the success rubric, last thing is um, 
if you're here for hypertrophy um, and you want to build muscle, particularly if you're not genetically gifted, um, you really need to be creative about your cardio. I know that William and I have been working on this together. Yep. Um, we both went from uh, moderate cardio, which is about 130 beats, heart, uh, your heart beats about 130 uh, times per minute um, for anywhere from 20 minutes to an hour, I think, uh, in our ranges. Yep. And we were noticing that it's just stunting muscle growth if you're just going for muscle growth. Yeah. So uh, I went to walking, and I think recently you you pretty much walked yourself almost to death, haven't you? Goodness, I really did, especially as I just returned uh, um, uh, from a little vacation. Um, I walked a whole lot. Um, so I, I enjoyed it, though. You know what? I, I really mm. did enjoy it. But I, I, to get to that point, I went from virtually no cardio to being able to do quite a bit of cardio, uh, enjoying it as well. But realizing that perhaps too much cardio can really be, um, you know, counteractive, counterintuitive, if you will. Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna cost energy that could otherwise be used for building up muscles, yep. uh, maintaining them. It it also, uh, if you're doing intense cardio, even moderately intense cardio for a long time, it can tear down muscles or cause because you're in too much of a calorie deficit if you're losing weight. Uh, uh, require of your body to pull from muscles for some of the uh, aminos or proteins yep. uh, that it needs for repair work. And so um, what you uh, really need to be doing when it comes to cardio, if you're into hypertrophy, which I think both of us are right now, mm -hmm. is yeah, you can do cardio, but just do it walking. Uh, I mean, I'll walk from anywhere from one to three hours. Uh, maybe I'll even only get 15 or 20 minutes in if it's a busy day. Uh, yep. Do it after you train uh, so that you can have the maximum force and maximum exhaustion possible for all of your muscle fibers. If you uh, tire yourself out beforehand, you're probably not going to get the best results from your training. Anything you'd like to say additionally, William? Yeah, I'll only add that you're, you're definitely right about that. Um, you will not get the best results. And I think that that is really the whole point that we we really are going to really be aiming to do uh, to get the best results because um, overdoing it is never, never, never recommended. And I think that um, there's always going to be some people out there that think that, well, you know what, um, I'll be okay. You know what, I'm, I'm uh, and if you're genetically gifted, okay. But the amount of people that really do have um, that are genetically gifted to that point, they're very, very few. So overall, generally, it really isn't recommended. Right. Well, at this particular point, we've uh, kind of gone over all the things that need to be in place for you to use Creeping Death, which we're providing for you. Uh, if you have everything that we've said in place, maybe with the addition of choosing a good calculation of how much protein per day, again, um, if you have for your total body weight, if you multiply it by 0.6, you probably have a somewhere around a minimum number of grams of uh, 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 protein that you need per day. Another way of doing it is if you do understand uh, how much lean body mass you're capable of putting together. So I'm like around six, six one. So probably my maximum lean body mass is going to be around 190 some pounds. So. Uh, my ideal would be something like 190 grams of protein, which is a tall order. It's tough to get 190 in when you're on a, a 2,000 calorie or less diet. Um, but, um, you know, that that's where I'm at. So if you know what your lean body mass ought to look like because you've kind of used um, some of those accurate measurements um, that are out there and available on, on, on various kinds of calculators, uh, then uh, make sure that you're, you're, you're staying steady on that protein and prioritizing that, and you're going to have some good results. And the other thing is, is uh, from the Renaissance periodization, it isn't something that I remember in a systematic way, John talking about. If I went back to the videos, he always does talk about this, but he doesn't talk about it systematically from his videos. I'm, um, and now I haven't watched every video, so I don't want to just say, say that it's not found somewhere. I've watched probably 30 or 40% of his videos. Um, but is uh, carb loading after uh, your workout. Uh, while, while, you're, while you're working out, you should probably have about uh, 100, uh, somewhere around 100 carbs maybe per hour. Uh, 
certainly 50 or 60 per hour. Um, but um, what about when you're done? Well, that's the, the four hours after you're done is the optimal time to replenish all of your uh, energy stores and your muscles uh, to provide glycogen as well as uh, to restore your ATP, all that type of stuff. Uh, you need carbs for that. So um, in order to uh, get that done, um, you need to you need to eat in those first four hours. Uh, and uh, also, of course, we know that creatine uh, is another thing that you can take daily. Um, you got to take it daily. You can't do every other day uh, in order to get a little bit of extra oomph with your, uh, with your reps. So that being said, um, I started my day one today with the creeping death. Um, here's my experience. And then I'll kind of turn it over to you, William. Um, I thought it was going to be easy. Um, I've been kicking my butt for a long time here, 13 months, you know, daily what I'm doing. Yep. Um, first things were is that John has some great, um, pro tips, which I really like with his, uh, creeping death and those pro tips, like, like, uh, basically, um, when I, you're doing certain back exercises, like your, uh, rows and your, um, chin-ups, your pronated chin-ups, to, to have your chest in a certain position. Uh, for example, the pronated chin-ups to stick your chest out and to drive with your elbows. Man, I have never done that before. And the quality of lat uh, stretch as well as lat exhaustion that I had and being able to feel my lats during the whole thing, it was amazing. I've never felt it before. So I was, uh, my lats were, were being blown apart uh, by day one, I wasn't totally exhausted, I think, but I, I I'm suspicious because it's a 12 week program that we're going to have progressive overload. Yep. So what we're going to be expecting is more and more challenges, uh, every week. Um, the other thing I would mention is, um, you do need to be familiar to use this program with uh, reps and reserve the RPE. Oh, yeah. Um, he explains those to you, but, uh, he gives it in simple language. Uh, but you really have to know your body to know I've got one rep in reserve. So today was on day one. He wanted basically nines for everything, which means maybe I could do one more and a couple, I think, for, for eight. Maybe I could do two more good form reps. You got to probably you, you've got to be in the game here a little bit and know what your maxes uh, look like for each lift and what your exhaustion looks like for each lift in order to really have a good idea. On, on how to start this program. What about you, William? No doubt. You have, um, I think really the main thing you drove point, you drove home the point that you have got to know your body. That is number one, because if you know your body, you know how many reps you have left in you. And I, I really, I don't know anybody that I, well, I do know people that will say, well, you know, how am I going to know? How am I going to know? You will know even if you've been lifting for a short amount of time. You will know once you begin doing the lift. And I think that really is important. The other thing I would like to add uh, is that as we progress through the program, without a doubt, it is going to get much more intense. Week one, in and of itself, week one is is challenging, very challenging. Yeah. Yeah. Um something that you mentioned that I think is important for our, our newer lifters. Um, if you don't know what um, failure looks like on a compound lift, so we're not talking about deadlifts, we're not talking about overhead presses, we're not talking about squats, we're not talking about um, bench press. So for basically any kind of machine lift um, that isolates muscles, uh, pretty much all other lifts, um, there's going to be some exceptions there, but those are the main compound lifts I just mentioned. Um, you should know what failure looks like. You should know with really good form, like you're looking at John Meadows video, you can imitate exactly the form that he or his, his uh, demonstrator uh, is giving. When you cannot push that up one more time, no matter what you do, and you're just stuck either in the flexing or in the um, non-flexing, we'll call it, 
positions instead of using the concentric and the eccentric words. Um, you have failed. Yeah. And you don't want to ego lift, which is heave your chest up or your legs when you're doing an arm exercise. You can't do a linear or a um, kind of swing uh, motion. You can't do um, a hip and you, to make things simple. You, you can't do the range of motion in the fashion in which the exercises is, is, is demonstrated. Right. You can't, you can't go from point A to point B without it being either too short or without having to heave and hoe in a way that is not part of the demonstrate. That is failure. Yep. That means that you're at an RPE um, 10. Uh, you have no reps in reserve. All right. So um, now he actually goes into 11, 12, and 13, which are advanced techniques, which I don't think you have to use in order to get through this program. Does right. that sound right to you, William? 100%. You're yeah. definitely 100% right. Yep. Yeah. So if you don't really know what your failure point looks like, um, then I would, I, I've seen John mention this in his videos, and I've also seen this, I uh, read this in the um, Renaissance Periodization. Most people don't know how to go hard in the gym. That's just that's just the way these experts who not only scientifically are experts, but they actually train people for a living. They would all tell you that the errors that you see in the gym are nobody goes hard enough. Your, your experience, William, when you're not that we spend a lot of time watching how hard people go, but um, it's pretty normal for me to see somebody doing 10 of something and it didn't look like it was really that hard for them to do that 10. Yeah, that that would be my exact experience as well. I think that that you're you're 100 percent on point in, in regards to that. So if you don't know, if you really want to do creeping death, too, and you really want to go through the 12 weeks with us in order to prepare for creeping death three, uh, when it comes out, um, then what you need to do is you need to take it to failure if it's not a compound lift, if it's not a bench press, if it's not a military press, if it's not a deadlift, if it's not a squat is you just need to go until you can't do it with the form that you're seeing John Meadows do it. Yep. That's when you're done. Because if you take everything to failure, John would say that the general experience is nobody's going hard enough, probably maybe by the end of week one, maybe by the week of end of weeks two. Now you're going to know what failure feels like, and then you can start doing the rep ranges that he says to keep one in reserve, to keep two in reserve. Yep. yep. What do you think, William? I think those are fantastic points. You're hundred percent. I don't have anything else to add. You're hundred percent on point. Yep. Great. So I'm, I'm certainly looking forward to this. I've never done a push pull legs. What about you? I have not. Um, I know that the one thing that really does uh, make me more excited more than anything else um, probably is the fact that uh, I know so many people tried the program. were not able to complete it because of how brutal they called it. Wow. Um, yeah, yeah, because of how brutal they called it, but uh, very inspired, very excited as well. It, you know, it, once you've been lifting long enough, anything like this gets pretty exciting. And um, it's fun as well because you're challenging yourself to see, you know, just how how brutal this can be, but just how rewarding it can be as well. Yeah, so if you're listening to this and you have not used the program or you want to reuse the program because – um, you, you've been on it before. I mean, I would invite anyone that wants to join us and report as we do shows through the next 12 weeks, uh, to tell us where they're at, how they're finding the program, um, anything that they're having insights on that we talk about. Uh, I think comments would be great. Obviously they help the channel, uh, the comments. Um, but, uh, I'm really, really excited to see what 12 weeks of an intense program, uh, looks like. Uh, and uh, also, uh, because I think both of us are perfectly comfortable with high rep ranges, I feel like I should be able to finish because I'm not going to get myself in trouble. Uh, and secondly, because I have a pretty darn good idea of what having only one rep or two reps in reserve looks like, because when you bust your hump uh, for a number of months, you start knowing your body well. So I think those are really key to understanding the method that John is using when he lists how many times you're supposed to do something. Yeah, without a doubt. Um, I think perhaps the most intense program I've ever run would be kind of a variation on German volume training, one that I 
pretty much tweaked and designed on my own. But this is much more intense than that. And it really is exciting. And I think it, uh, it'll it be a fun challenge. And I want to, um, uh, I'll repeat the point you made. Look, we don't care if all you've got to say is good or thumbs up or thank you. Uh, comment down below for the algorithm. We got near where well, we're currently at almost a thousand views for our first video on our on this new relatively new channel uh but only one comment so let's try and get multiple ones it does help for the algorithm and it will bring in new subs and it'll be beneficial uh not only uh for us but for you because more subs means more content because more people are looking out there and more people want material yeah if i remember correctly with the renaissance periodization book series um, the push-pull legs is still the standard bro way of uh, training. In other words, if we were to look at natural bodybuilders out there or professional bodybuilders, it's still the preferred way. Um, now, I don't know how they collect the statistics on this, and uh, provided that my memory is accurate with reading the book, we're actually getting ready to embark on a program which is considered the standard hypertrophy program to have um, twice a week uh, every muscle uh, trained uh, and to have it trained on this kind of split. Now, I think it's probably in, co in competition with the bro split, which might, uh, which is typically a five or six day program where you only do training one muscle every day. But I think that the bro split, um, for those uh, who didn't hear me emphasize natural bodybuilders, yeah. uh, natural bodybuilders need to hit the muscles more because they do not have the, let's say, the chemical helpers yep. um, known as steroids or SARMs or all this type of stuff, is that sometimes in, in some ways we need to do more to make the progress as quickly as we can. Uh, we need to do more each week, uh, is it, which is not to say that, of course, somebody on steroids wouldn't benefit from the program. It's to say that for us to get the kind of benefits that feel like rapid progress uh, we can't rely on chemical enhancement. We have to keep stimulating the muscles quite often in order to hope to get a little bit of growth instead of stimulating them once a week and uh, being able to uh, rely on chemical uh, assistance in order to get exponential growth. Yeah, th what a, you bring up a really good point there. And I think I want to echo that for, for, uh, for the audience. I think it's really, really important is that um, you're right. Doing this naturally, doing this the right way is really the key point. But I've had people reach out to me and say, you know what, well, you know, with these guys at the gym that I see that are much bigger than me, uh, I'm very discouraged. Don't be discouraged. Don't be at all. Um, because your goal should be to become the best version of yourself. Really, that has got to be your number one goal. Not to worry about what anybody else is doing, but to worry about becoming the best version of yourself and i think that really is the most important thing and i think that this program will battle test you and you're going to come out of it uh realizing okay well maybe i'm uh, lacking in that department maybe this is a weak body part beyond weak and i didn't know or maybe many other things or maybe you're just going to come out of the program saying you know what uh that was incredibly easy which i very very much doubt that but either which way, it could be very different depending on who, who it is. Either which way, this is going to be a very, very fun uh, program and very fun to be tracking it and doing shows talking about it. Yeah, it'll be fun, too, to hear if some people decide to join us and they yeah. they didn't know that the PDF was available. Yep. The PDF is super helpful. What I really like is that John designed it where you can click on a link for every uh, exercise and see immediately on YouTube one of his videos demonstrating it. It's it's a really fantastically uh, designed. I I was in the gym today and just to make sure that I was uh, being faithful to uh, John's spirit, so to speak, for every time before I began a set, I immediately went to my PDF, I clicked on the exercise and I watched it. And I'm someone who's seen tons of his videos and I've now been 13 months straight uh, in the gym pretty much six days a week. On average, maybe five days a week if you uh, count sick days or, uh, you know, vacation days and, and uh, just really busy days. But um, I have no problem uh, humbling myself and always trying to relearn 
with better technique, everything. It's, it's just really fantastic and so convenient to do now on your phone. And uh, he provides such easy to follow uh, information if you just take the time to read the beginning uh, of, of the program on, on, on how to apply it. Uh, anything you, you have there, William? Yeah, I, I, I'll emphasize that like the links to the videos on his channel, uh, everything else on his channel, uh, to put a plug in, there'll be a link down there below by the time this airs tonight. Uh, what a wealth of information you're going to find there. Uh, one particular area that I, um, that I found so much um, help from was uh, biceps. That was really, really beneficial to me. Uh, seeing videos detailing uh, just how to get the most out of the movements. And I think um, aside from following those links and benefiting from them, check out the other videos as well and the incredible advice offered on, uh, on John's amazing channel. Really second to none amount of information and examples there. What a great channel. By the way, if uh, some of our people that are following this are real zealots and uh, they're not um, real knowledgeable of their recovery time, uh, they may need more than three days. I know that sometimes when I do legs, I need four or five days. Right. Uh, I'm really afraid that uh, I can't even remember what they're called. Something like the Bulgarian death, uh, something or another that he, he calls on there. Uh, yeah. Bulgarian death. Um, what are they, what are they called? Um, not uh, Bul Bulgarian sp split squats that are um, not supersetted, but drop sets. Yes, the drop sets of death or something. Um, oh, brutal. I would not be surprised if I'm going to need four days to recover from that. That's where I'm going to probably take my day off um, on that fourth day of the push pull legs instead of uh, the the first day of the week, which is Sunday. Right. Right. Yep. Um, I'm just going to need to take that extra day off. So I would say, you know, don't be afraid to stop. The cycle, the split, if you're sore, John was so insistent that you don't train sore muscles. If on day one, uh, at day four, when the split is designed to repeat itself, uh, you can't claim that you feel something like 90, 95% recovered, you're sore or you're fatigued uh, or you're inflamed. Uh, what you should be doing is you should probably be going to a five-day version, which he provides for. There, if you're consistently finding that this is the case, and you should have a rest day uh, in between um, your first split, which is, uh, I think he does pull, uh, instead of push pull legs, I think he does pull push legs. Is that what he does? Yeah. He yeah. Does? You're correct. Pull yeah. Push legs. So uh, pull push legs, rest day, pull push legs, rest day. That's what you should be doing. Yep. So uh, do not be ashamed or afraid to take. A day off for those muscles to recover. Um, I would have never known this um, in my youth. Maybe I had heard it from the people that had trained me before, but he was so insistent on this. It's just a principle. I just won't train a single muscle. And if you notice, let's say on your uh, pull day that your biceps only are sore, well, then you don't, then maybe you can do the entire pull day and skip biceps yep. uh, for the second day of your split on that week. And then come back to them on the second week or the third, uh, whenever you're recovered. So don't be afraid to omit a body part, as John would tell you, in order to be able to train it over the long term. It's not worth uh, trying to check off a list, which means nothing. What, what means something is the gains that you're going to make and the health that is the final result. 100%. That is what really means the most. And that is what is the most important. Really, really good point there. Yeah. So at this point, William, um, I'm just going to kind of look at the overall program here. And it looks like yep. we're going to be together for 12 weeks on this, right? That's correct. 12 whole weeks. Yep. Yeah. And, uh, and as I said, it's a pull push leg. He gives a really interesting rationale uh, for why he does that. So make sure you read that at the beginning. Yes. Uh, yeah. And then um, we are on week one, day one today. Yep. First day. Your, yeah. What was your experience? Uh, what, what did you do for your uh, one-arm barbell roll? 
So I was able to actually do that at home. So a little uh -huh. bit of cheating because I, I did do that at home. I was uh, able to do that. But um, but I will say that um, very likely if I do vary that in the future, I'll probably do it exactly the way you did it. Mm -hmm. um, my, I guess, thoughts on day one uh, would be that I had uh, I had tried it before in the past, only the beginning. I think I only got through uh, through two weeks, um, and uh, I can say that uh, it is as brutal as I remember it to mm. have been. Um, uh, but I think more than anything else, I this time around, uh, I'm insanely committed, thrilled, and I just can't wait to see um, what we're saying. Once we hit week 12, that I, I'm excited for that. Mm -hmm. Do with your one arm barbell rows, uh, do you keep your chest out and your head up? I do, yes, I do. First time I ever did that because of the yeah. pro tip from John, I couldn't believe the difference in using my laps, lats versus my yeah. bicep, just like you said. What an incredible difference when you take um, the emphasis off of the biceps, you will feel an incredible incredible amount of um uh, of targeting there of the lats you're gonna feel they're, they're gonna feel like they're on fire they feel mm -hmm. incredible, don't they yeah and then uh my chin-ups i usually was uh, satisfied with sets of six so i tried the eights today uh, i was fried after, oh yeah after eight no so i'm just not a, i'm not really good at chin-ups so i had to do the assisted but and, there's something wrong with that though there's something wrong with that um sure. yeah and uh let's be very clear here for people that may be thinking, well, you know, the assisted do everything. No, they do not. Mm -hmm. They do not. They will fry you as well, and they feel fantastic as well. Yeah, and both of these were RPE 9, um, which meant that I had to know my body well enough to think that I could only get one more rep with good form Yep, and not more than that. Certainly not 1.5. 1.4 maybe, but uh, that would be the best I could do. And then the next uh, for day one was um, the dumbbell pullovers. Now, I haven't done those in a while. I had taken those out. And I remember that John really emphasized uh, with the pullover. So watch his technique. Don't do the pullover where you're pulling the uh, dumbbell from the basically the ground all the way up on top, top of uh, over your face. You basically take it to the forehead because you're not getting any... Um, any back work done after it's basically hanging over your forehead. Anything that technique wise that you noticed from John or your own experience with Adam William? Yeah, and I, I remember following that advice from John uh, beforehand. So I was fully aware of that. That is a really, really good technique there. It's an important technique. And I think uh, in order to get the, uh, the maximum amount of, of, um, of stretch and everything, that is really, really important to follow that particular piece of advice. And I did forget on exercise four for the back to bring my bands in today. Oh, you did. Yeah. So I did it, but he gives you, he tells you just go ahead and use your dumbbells. But yep. something that I did pick up from another fitness guy that I have really benefited from, his name is Sean Navalyani. I don't know if you've seen oh, him. Oh yeah. Great. Uh, if you slightly uh, curve your back and lean forward, uh, almost with your head down a little bit, when you do those um, shrug, shrugs with dumbbells, it really emphasizes uh, the uh, target muscles better than standing straight up. And what John also taught me that I've used every single time I do shrugs is he tells you there to hold for two seconds. You better count one Mississippi, two Mississippi. It makes a world of difference uh, to get that back activation uh, yeah. when you're holding that uh, for that two seconds. And those two seconds are... <laughs> they are quite intense, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you should also uh, remember that the Renaissance periodization has provided the scientific basis for what, a, in your entire full range, how many seconds uh, are beneficial for hypertrophy. Yep. Now, I may get the lower seconds off by one, but I believe it was anywhere from when you are, let's say, doing the easy part, which is letting down or letting go of the weight, uh, to use non-technical terms, yeah. that, that would be uh, something like uh, four seconds, and then when you're pull, when you're when you're straining your muscles to move the weight, that should be something like three seconds. So if you're Correct. doing something between like 
uh, five or six seconds at the low end to a nine second, uh, up to nine seconds. If you're doing any slower than nine seconds, trying to do some sort of slow motion lifting, it's doubtful that you're actually getting all the benefits of normal hypertrophy. You're probably getting a substandard lift. So yeah. try to keep your, your, your total uh, rep range somewhere between something like five to nine seconds uh, when you're doing that to get your maximum uh, activation. Yep. Nothing to add. Very, very good points. And you're right. I have noticed that that was uh, uh, put forth by Renaissance Periodization, which, by the way, has incredible information as well. Mm -hmm. And again, if uh, any of you remember that the, the exact numbers uh, that we're giving are a little bit off, feel free to, to quote the page. I, I'd rather us not do a, a battle of memories because right. memories for everybody are, are uh, better or worse depending on the day and what they've eaten and stuff. But if you all do have the, uh, the book page number uh, that you know that it's actually uh, two seconds instead of three seconds, then uh, feel free to uh, to tell us what page that is on. We're, we're perfectly open to being corrected here. Just trying to give you as, as much as we can to get through uh, this uh, first week. Um, so at any rate, without um, going uh, in too much detail as we, we're kind of wrapping up here, um, he has um, the... Um, After this, he has the ab work, which I've never actually done those leg raises before. Have you done those? I have done them very, very sparingly. Um, mm -hmm. Hardly, hardly have, but... Um, Decline bench leg raises. Yeah, those, those, those I have, I, I, as far as I remember, I, I think maybe a few times only. I actually found that I was really well prepared because of the last 13 months to do them, but I what? still hated them, every single one every single one you're going to hate <laughs> no matter yeah. how prepared you may be you're going to hate them either way and it, to, just to illustrate what the rpe of nine looks like so my first set so i think he has four sets here um my first set was something like 15 but my second set was at an rp9 i could only get one more at something like 10. wow my third set was something like 10 and my last set was something like seven so right. I knew my body well enough to know I could maybe get eight on my last set. So I did seven. I could maybe get 11 on my second to last set. So I did 10. So that's what you need to be thinking about. Not absolute numbers, but relative yeah. numbers. And that's pretty advanced lifting when you know your body that well. Oh, without a doubt. It's very advanced. You, but, but you've got to get to that point to where you yeah. do know your body that well. Yeah. And then the last things he had on 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 the pull day were biceps, and uh, we don't have a dumbbell preacher curl at uh, my gym. Uh, I think you did yours at home today. So do you have a preacher curl uh, machine? Uh, do you have a preacher curl? Uh, what do you call that pad there? I don't, but I have a way to where you can do that mm. at, at Planet Fitness. No, really, there is a way. So um, if you go to where the Smith machine is and you angle. You angle the bench to a certain way. You are able to do them in a preacher-like fashion. And that is exactly how I do use them. I utilize the where the Smith machines are, where the benches are. I angle it properly, lean against it, chest supported, and I do the preacher curls that way. So wow. I, I've, I've been able to, um, to find a workaround, if you will, which is works exactly like a preacher curl. I mean, either which way. You're not going to be going crazy doing a crazy amount of weight mm -hmm. preacher curling. And if anyone is doing a crazy amount of weight when they preach a curl, you're out of your mind because you are risking tearing your biceps. And that is an injury that I, I do not wish upon anyone. Yeah. And for my part, knowing John Meadows, because I've spent so much time watching him, I know that if I can't, uh, if I don't have the equipment, then I use the, the next best, right? Yep. So. I just used the easy bar uh, and uh, I had really good form, tried to have very little motion, concentrated on form, um, used the easy bar and I got my four sets in that way. Yep. yep. And then I like how uh, last time you showed us his dumbbell hammer curls to finish us off today, which I sat, you know, um, the opposite direction that one ought to sit, it looks like for a uh, lat pull down machine. And I stuck my elbows on the back of that pad, and I had really good form just 
doing those uh, dumbbell hammer curls. Got four sets in and finished it off today. Yeah, and they're great. They're, they are great. Um, in fact, uh, one other point to make uh, is that I did utilize, I did use a uh, easy curl bar when I um, when I did that variation, but they are um, very good, very handy on the wrists as well. Um, very, very good moments, uh, movements. I think, um, again, for people that are looking at the program, when you look at the program, click the links if you are wondering how to do any of the movements. The videos that you're going to get to that you follow from the program are going to show you exactly how to do it if you have any lingering questions. Yeah. So this this starts us off with day one. Obviously, we've got the um, push tomorrow, and then we've got uh, the leg workout, which I'm a little scared of. I usually have to mentally prepare for leg workout. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you're scared of it, I, I, I'm downright terrified of it. <laughs> yeah. So uh, – at this rate, um, our hope is, as uh, William and I discussed, is once we get through the 12 weeks with you all, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to kind of do some more frequent shows. Yep. If, we're, if we're lucky, maybe uh, every so many days. I mean, it may not be every week, but maybe uh, maybe not not having to wait every two weeks if we're lucky. Right. Kind of catch up. Where are we at? Um, maybe take some body progress photos. Um, yep. And then uh, see what we all uh, experience at, at the end of the 12 weeks. I know I'm going to be waiting on my uh, nephew, Dom, and his buddy, Zach, to report. I know they're going to be taking some progress photos. I know that this will be round two, if not three, for Tom to use it, right? That is correct. I believe round two. Uh, but I think, from what I remember correctly, when Tom first did it, I don't know if he finished the program or he switched something out and he said he was thrilled to get onto it again. He was going to try something properly that he hadn't done properly the first time i don't remember what it was mm -hmm. uh, but he'll probably probably throw a rock at my head for revealing that but mm -hmm. <laughs> i'm revealing that either which way the point is we are all thrilled to be on board we're thrilled to be trying it and um to be uh following along you know it's going to be exciting yeah and i'm a little intimidated myself because i've never completed anything like this again uh, i've pat i've done patchwork programs that it worked for me, obviously. I made great progress, but um, this is a professionally put together program that uh, is by someone with more training experience than we could ever wish for. Oh, yeah. Uh, no doubt. Who, who has the, um, the formal studies as well behind his belt and who has become a trusted name in the fitness community. So uh, I'm a little intimidated. Uh, I hope I can uh, get through it. I know that I'll have your encouragement and uh, certainly yeah. uh, Tom's. And uh, I know that I can't let my nephew uh, finish okay. something uh, without me finishing it and finishing it, at least in my mind, better since uh, uh, I have to be the, uh, the, you know, paternal uncle and not the uh, and not the wimp. So at any rate, uh, I, hopefully all those factors put together will be uh, uh, something enough to get me through it. So I hope everybody else that's uh, yep. listening out there will, will find their own motivations to uh, get through the program with us and uh, tell us about their experiences. And with your encouragement, the audience as well, let us know what you think down below. But you're right about that. Uh, I think one thing that really is going to help about doing this program is we are going to be supporting each other. We're going to be checking in with each other every day, talking about it every day. And that will be the fun thing because as we dialogue every day, Tom, father, myself, um, Everything we learn, it'll be le learning process as well. What we learn, what we catalog, what we write down, we're going to share with you all, the audience, as we go through this uh, incredible yeah. journey. So Dom has his gym bro, which is Zach. Yeah. Um, there's the three of us. They're going to be encouraging each other. Yep. If you have the willpower to do it on your own, do so. But I'll tell you what, statistically speaking, if you have companionship, that is support, whether it's instrumental support, somebody helping you with equipment or a gym membership, uh, but also community support in the sense that you have a lifting partner or someone that at least uh, wants to be participating in your progress. Like they, uh, they want you to text them how, they, how, how it went. Uh, they want you to review with them uh, what you're doing. Uh, I certainly encourage you all to do that because it, it certainly made a world of difference for me to get through the last 13 months, having William to bounce stuff off of almost no every doubt. day. Hey, and the uh, the one thing that I have emphasized a lot, multiple times over, uh, I've been doing this for a very long time, but 
how often have I told you, Father, that, oh, I've learned this. Oh, I've learned that. I've been encouraged here. Don't ever think. Here's my advice for people. Don't ever think that because you've been lifting for a while, that you're at a point in your life where you can no longer learn anything new. You can. And humble yourself. You will if you want to. Great. Any uh, any closing uh, remarks by you, William? Um, I'll, I'll, we'll close in saying that uh, I've had a great time talking about this on the uh, one-year anniversary of, uh, of the passing of our dear friend and brother John. It's been incredibly fun, exciting, uh, something great and fun to look forward to. Um, I'm just thrilled and excited. Uh, and that's a good thing because uh, when sometimes people think of um, somebody passing away and it's all complete negativity, it really shouldn't be because this channel is about physical training and about godliness. And we have that great hope that our dear friend is in glory in heaven and is uh, is watching over us and probably smiling and laughing that we're um we're going to be trying this brutal program. So there's a lot of happiness in the show today. Uh, and indeed, there really should be because we should be rejoicing uh, that we're able to honor our friend, our brother this way and have fun talking about this and our journey on this program. Great. Well, I'd like to say that grace can aid in weightlifting, but uh, uh, maybe we can look to Samson, who was the uh, image for your uh, first program that uh, you can tear yep. down pillars if you get grace. But by and large, we have to rely on our natural prudence and our natural powers. Uh, at this time, since John gave us so much natural stuff to, to uh, kind of arm ourselves with, why don't we go ahead and close out with a traditional uh, Latin rite or Roman Catholic prayer Definitely. for our deceased brother, John. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come unto you. May the soul of your servant, John, rest in peace. Amen. From the gates of Hades, Deliver his soul, O Lord. May he rest in peace. Amen. May the souls of the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Amen. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Father, Amen. Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Everybody, thank you for tuning in. We did film this today. You are watching it this evening. We filmed it on the anniversary of John uh, passing and our hope into glory. We know that he is with the Lord. He is definitely an incredible inspiration for us. And give the video a like, share it, and comment down below. We'd love to hear your thoughts. And, Until support, later, right? and yep. support John's family, if you wish, yes. uh, by being a good patron of uh, all John's efforts and work, uh, which is the granite products that are still available for you out there. Absolutely. Check those links down right below. They will be there. Everybody, thank you very much for tuning in. God bless you all, and we will see you all again. Thank you.